almost everything you've done since you've been CEO in the last three and a half years has worked perfectly. You know, the stock is up, the market value is up, everybody likes you. The only thing that I could find that anybody criticized you for was you gave a statement about women's uh, pay at one point, and you cor uh, correctly, um, I think, changed your position the next day. But can you explain what happened? Absolutely. I was asked about uh, you know pay equity. In fact, I, you know. I, I just gave such an absolute nonsensical answer, which um, Maria Clave, who was interviewing me, was kind enough to correct me while uh, I was on stage itself. Because I was answering a question literally using some past, I mean, my own personal experience, without understanding the broader context, the depth of that question, which is, what does a person like me, who is a CEO of a company, doing to make sure that, one, women can fully participate uh, in our companies and in our economies. There is equal pay for equal work, and more importantly, there is equal opportunity for equal work. That was the real question. It was not about, like, okay, what worked for you and what career advice do you have for me? Uh, it was a great learning moment for me. Uh, it's something that I've obviously uh, taken back. In fact, when I talk to women who are very close to me, work with, you know, very senior, very successful women uh, that are key to Microsoft and heard even their own personal experiences, that's when it struck me how you know the job of a CEO in particular is to make sure that everyone. Uh, whether it's gender diversity or ethnic diversity, can first come into the company, do their best work, so that we can then serve right. our customers. So that's a re realization, um, which right. I thought I had, quite frankly. Uh, but I was, uh, I'm glad I messed up so publicly because I think I internalized the lessons from it. Did you hear uh, from your wife about that? Or absolutely. That? From At that time, my mom was alive for my mom and my wife. My wife had to give up her career because of our son. Uh, but in my, even in my mom's case, uh, she struggled. She, in fact, uh, now I realize it a lot more than I even did, obviously growing up, uh, was the trade-off she had to make uh, where she, the the system that she was working in did not support her re-entry into the workforce right. after uh, you know, she had uh, both my, myself and my sister. So you have um, about 125,000 employees, something like that. So uh, what percentage are male, what percentage are female, and how many senior women do you have? Technology is not a place where a lot of women have risen That's to the top a, uh, yet, yeah. uh, relatively speaking. In fact, one of the things that uh, we have made some good progress on is uh, on the women's representation, which we have a long way to go. I mean, you've got to remember that in tech, we have a particularly tougher issue because of our technology uh, disparity in terms of uh, gender diversity. But let's start with the progress, which is in the last year, we made, um, we've gone from around, you know, we improved to 27.7% of women coming into the organization, which is around two points more than historical. Right. And in the technology side, uh, where we've improved uh, by four points. So that's, I would say, movement in the right direction, but not enough, obviously. One of the other things our board uh, also did was to change the compensation system for me as well as my direct reports uh, to say, look, numeric progress, besides all the work uh, that we may do, programs we may have, and the talk, let's even tie compensation of the senior most people, including the CEO, to real numerical progress. And so uh, we're doing everything, uh, but quite frankly, it's going to take continuous vigilance, continuous push, uh, and it's a top-of-mind issue for all of us.